Okay, hello. Welcome to this lecture on nominal and effective interest rates. Up until this point, uh, we have done um, compounding interest where the interest rate was given per annum as well as the compounding period uh, was also per annum. But it's not necessarily the case that your compounding period will always be uh, a year. So it's common practice to state the interest rate per annum and then also give the compounding period. Now the quoted annual rate of interest uh, will be called the nominal rate of interest and we usually denote that with the symbol J. So for example if we say that the interest rate is 12% per annum then my J will be the 12%. Now the compounding period can be anything. Um, it can it usually can be something like months, or it can be days, or it can be continuous compounding. So if the interest rate compounding period is not per annum, then the real, or we also call it the effective rate of interest per annum, will be different from the nominal rate of interest. And we can then get the effective interest rate per compounding period. We can calculate that from the nominal interest rate um, and we do that by taking the nominal interest rate J and then we divide it by the number of compounding periods per year and that will then give us IM remember M is the number of compounding periods per, per annum and I will then IM will then be the effective interest rate per compounding period okay so it's easiest to understand this if we do a few examples. Now the first example, example 11, is a repetition of an example that you are familiar with by now. We did this example in, um, in example 1 as well as in example 7. So you will recognize this um, example by now. A person requires a loan of a thousand rands and is able to repay the loan after two years. Assuming a bank is willing to lend the person the thousand rands, determine how much should be repaid, assuming that the interest rate is 12% per annum, compounded monthly. So this example now differs from example 7 in that the compounding period is not per annum, but it is now per month. Okay, so again, we start out with what we have. We have the present value, which is a thousand. Um, we have our interest rate, and that is 12% per annum. So that is my nominal interest rate. That is my J. Sorry, I should actually write this not as I. I should write it as J. J is 0.2. 1, 2 per annum and now we state the compounding period as compounded monthly. I just use the C dot M dot to, um, so that I don't need to write it out uh, fully but this stands for compounded monthly. And then we also have our N. Our N is equal to two years but remember that we have to adapt our n to use the same units as the compounding periods. So my n is two years, but I have to write it in terms of months because my compounding period is monthly. So two years is equal to 24 months. So my n will now be 24. Okay, so again, we use the formula for compounding interest. The future value is the present value, 1 plus i to the n. And now we will just write that i as i m, um, because so far we assumed that my interest uh, was given compounded annually, but the compounding period can be different years and that is why we are going to just write it now 
um, as IM to get the effective interest rate per compounding period. Okay, so my present value is a thousand rands. And now my effective interest rate per month is equal to J over M. My J is my nominal interest rate. That's the interest rate per annum. And that was given as 12%. So it's 0 0.12. And I divide it by the number of compounding periods. So the, the compounding period is um, monthly. And there are 12 months in a year. So we divide it by 12. And my N in terms of months, because it must be the same as the compounding period, is equal to 24 and then we get for our future value we get 1269 brands 73 cents now i want you to compare that to the previous examples um, that we've done um, example one where we did simple interest our future value was 1240 and in example Seven, where we worked with compound interest, but the compounding period was um, per year. My future value was equal to 1,254 rands, 40 cents. So if we, we already know by now that the future value will be more if we make use of compound interest uh, compared to simple interest. And now we um, discovered something else that the future value will also be more if the compounding period um, is shorter. In other words, if the compounding is done more frequently. Okay, so that was then for example um, 11. And now we can look at the next one, example 12. Example 12 is again a repetition of example 4 for simple interest and example 8 uh, for compound interest if the compounding period is uh, per year. So determine the interest an investor earns if the future value of his investment is 2000 rands. The interest rate is 16% per annum compounded quarterly and the investment period is 5 years. So let's start by writing all the information, writing down all the information we have. We have the future value is 2,000 rands. Um, we have the interest rate, and this is now my nominal interest rate. That is why I use the letter J. That is equal to 16% per annum. And now my compounding is compounded quarterly. And then my N is equal to five years. But remember that we have to adapt this N to um, be in the same unit as the compounding period. So the compounding period is um, quarterly. And we have four quarters in a year. So to get the number, or to write the five years in terms of quarters, we will take the five years and be multiplied by 4 for the 4 quarters per year, and therefore my n will be equal to 20. Okay, and if we have um, all this information, we can get the um, present value. And remember, if we have the present value and we have the future value, then we can find the interest, because the interest is just the difference between the future value and the present value. So we will start by calculating and the present value. Uh, perhaps before we do that, um, let's just get an idea of the, the order size of the answer we expect. We had for example four, we had the interest, and that was then when we worked with simple interest. The interest was equal to this. And for example, um, eight, where we worked with compound interest, but the compounding period was per annum. We had an interest of 
more than a thousand rands. Now my question to you is what answer do you expect to get for example 12? Do you think it will be less than um, this 888 rands? Do you think it will be more than the 1047 rands? What answer do you expect? Okay, so give yourself a moment to think what answer you expect to get and that's a very good practice to always before you get an answer to get an intuitive feeling of the answer that you expect to get um, that will help you to if you get an answer that doesn't make sense it will help you to go back to your uh, calculations and make sure that your reasoning and your calculations are correct okay so let's continue with uh, this example 12 Again, we start out with our formula for compound interest. Okay, and in this case, we would like to get the present value. So the present value is the future value to the minus n. And now we can do our substitution by Future value is 2,000 rands. Okay, and my uh, effective interest rate per quarter is my nominal interest rate, the interest rate per annum, which is 16%. And then I divide it by M, the number of compounding periods per annum. And we have four quarters per annum, therefore I divide this by four. And my N must be in terms of quarters now and not in terms of years because I, I'm, my compounding is per quarter. So that will then 5 years will be 5 times 4, that will be 20. Okay, and now from this we can get our interest. We know that the future value is the present value plus the interest. So the interest must be the future value minus the present value. My future value is 2000 rands minus my um, present value. Okay, and because my answer is a rand value, I put in the units, it's rands, and I round it off to two decimals uh, because my final answer needs to be in, in terms of rands. Okay, and now you can compare your answer to um, the answers we got for the previous examples. Um, and if we go back, we have an interest here that is now more than the interest for simple interest. It's more than the interest for compounding interest when the compounding period is per annum because my compounding period is now shorter or the compounding is more frequent, my interest will be more. Um, and that is exactly what we've got here. So you can feel confident that your calculations um, are correct. Okay, let's look at example 13. If compounding occurs monthly, at what rate of interest per annum must money be invested so as to double itself in five years? Okay, this is an interesting question. Uh, what information do we have? Um, Okay, so we would like to find the nominal interest rate. That is what we would like to find. Um, we have that our N is equal to uh, five years, but you can see here that the compounding occurs monthly. So my N must be in terms of months. So we take five times 12 to get 60 months. For my n. Um, and now we, uh, we don't really have the present value and the future value, we only have them in relation to each other. And if we write the present value just as PV, then from this question we know that the future value is 
two times the present value. It doubles its sum in five years' time. Okay, so let's see whether we can find the nominal interest rate. So we start out with our formula for compounding interest. And we would like to get the interest rate. So to do that, we have done this previously um, for previous examples, but let's just do it again. Um, first of all, I will divide with the present value on the left and on the right. So if I divide with the present value, the left and on the right, then this can cancel out. And then I would like to get uh, rid of this of this in. So I will take on the left and to the right, I will take it to the power 1 over n. Okay, and this n and this n will cancel out. So and then on the right I have 1 plus im, and remember I want the interest rate on its own. So to get the interest rate on its own, I will just subtract a 1 on the right and a 1 on the left. So what I have then is that the effective interest rate, im, is equal to this. Okay, and I know that my future value is two times my present value. That was given in the original question. My present value, I just leave as present value. Um, my n, if we go back, my n was equal to five years, and now in terms of months, it's um, 60 months. So I add that to the power 1 over 60 minus 1. So now the present value cancels out. So in effect, I have 2 to the power 1 over 60 minus 1. And that will give me an answer of 0 0.0116194 and so forth. Okay, um, so this is now the effective interest rate per month. And we would like to get the nominal interest rate um, compounded monthly. So to get to, to J, the nominal interest rate, I will just take this interest rate and multiply it by 12. So let's just do it on the next page. So what we have here, we have calculated on the previous slide, is that I12, the effective monthly interest rate, So this is per month effective. And that's the per month effective interest rate. We can also write it as, in terms of percentage, 1.16194% per, per month effective. Okay, so to get the nominal interest rate, J, I will just take this, and I keep it in the decimal form now, and I multiply that by 12 and in terms of percentage this is now in terms of percentage or you can write it in terms of um, in, in decimal form so my nominal interest rate is this 13.9433 percent per annum and then it's important to add here that it's compounded monthly.